Thank you. I'm Matt Connor, one of the product leaders at AnyScale, and looking forward to talking with you all about how we're making AI infrastructure headaches disappear in 2024. Now, before I launch in on how we're doing that, I'd like to talk about the types of applications we're seeing developers building, the sort of challenges they're running into, and what's causing those headaches. So let's start with a real world AI challenge, creating a patient assistant to help diabetics better manage their health condition. Now, managing diabetes is incredibly challenging. There's tens of millions of patients out there that struggle to keep their blood control, blood glucose, in a narrow, acceptable range. This is made incredibly hard by the number of different factors that impact their glucose, like the food they eat, the dose they took, the type of medication they took. Just getting that right is hard, but knowing what happened previously that can help them iterate and improve their care is really hard. After all, how many of us know exactly what they ate two weeks ago and know how to modify and, and get better going forward? Now, tech promises huge advancements to help diabetics better manage their condition. There's new monitors that track glucose in near real time. There's systems that help log the medication and dosage that patients take. The mobile phones are now collecting context on where a patient was, what they did, what they read, what, browse, what browsing they did that day, or what text messages they may have sent. Smart watches are collecting health data and biometric data. And really exciting new developments with smart glasses and wearables are helping patients take pictures of the food that they actually eat. And so when developers look at a problem like this, there's a number of really exciting opportunities to help these sorts of patients. First, giving patients perfect memory and information. So if a patient asks a question like, what happened the last time I went to dinner on Friday at In-N-Out Burger, they can get the answer and make adjustments. Or if they wanna ask a question, what's the healthiest item for me to eat at Olive Garden? They can get that information right in their hands and, and have better control over their condition. The second component of an application a developer might want to build is to be able to predict and alert patients ahead of time that they might actually be engaging in behavior that can cause their blood glucose to go out of control. And finally, the third component of an application like this would be to actually provide recommendations, personal, personalized medical recommendations for these patients to do a better job managing their condition or tailored messaging to help them do a better job. Now this is really exciting and very, very promising, but when you take a look at the AA infrastructure headaches that each of these components cause, you'll see why any scale exists and why we're working with developers to solve those. So let's go piece by piece. On that first part, on giving patients a way to interact and ask questions about their health and what might have happened last time they did something, this is a classic RAG application. And some of the challenges we see here are actually performing large-scale embeddings. If you have millions of patients and millions and millions or tens of millions of documents, actually performing the computational task to create those embeddings can be very expensive. Evaluating the application that you built can be very hard. Knowing which model, which embedding model, which LLM, the chunk size to use are all really hard challenges, computationally expensive, and can cost you a lot in compute not fun things for developers to spend time looking into. Then we get to actually LLM inference. We all know about the size of LLMs and how hard it is to do inference and how cost prohibitive that can be. And so having the right infrastructure in place to lower costs is incredibly important. Actually getting compute can be really hard. These are very scarce resources, so having the right availability to build this sort of application and being able to put the right models on the right hardware. We just had an awesome conversation on smaller models and being able to deploy those on the right instances is really, really hard. There's also the challenge of spiky traffic. In an application like the one we just described, you might see many patients logging in at dinner time, causing a huge burst that you need to scale and meet, whereas overnight there might be no traffic. And then of course there's reliability. Health is a 24-7 endeavor. 
You need to build a robust system that is always up and reliable. When we look at the second component, actually predicting and alerting patients ahead of time, some of the challenges here, are, and I hesitate to even call it this, are traditional AI problems. Creating a training set and doing feature engineering with multimodal data can be incredibly challenging. Trying to create a personalized model for each patient when you have thousands or millions of patients necessitates many model training and distributed training, which can be really, really hard to do right. On top of that, if you're using a different type of model and maybe not using an LLM for this sort of task, being able to optimize the hardware is really hard. What I mean by that is these models might not need an entire large compute instance. They might need a fraction of the resources available there. How do we make sure that we can support that to lower costs in building this sort of application? And when we look at the last piece, actually providing recommendations, there's any number of challenges that come up. Some patients might have a rules-based patient approach and we need to look up in a database the recommendation return that to the, to the user. Do we build that an entirely different system? How do we orchestrate that alongside the model that actually sends the recommendation? We might want to do fine tuning at very large scale. How do we manage that? How do we do that? And then we might want structured outputs. When we give these recommendations, we want to make sure that we track and learn from them. So while it's great that we give a patient a recommendation on a dose and a medication to take, we might want to capture that so that we can learn and iterate as we go along. How do we solve that challenge? And these are challenges that, while specific to this example, we're hearing over and over again, and they're only getting worse. And what I mean by that is that there's obviously been a huge explosion in the number of open source LLMs and models in general. We're seeing applications that are making use of where previously it was a handful of models, there's now dozens or hundreds of model, and that's only going to continue accelerating. After all, we hear about a new LLM almost every week. How do we incorporate that, fine tune, and deploy it? Then there's the challenge that's common to these sorts of applications on just the complexity of AI infrastructure and how much that has grown in the past several months. When you take a look, if I had stood on this stage two years ago and mentioned that we were using a GPU, the conversation would have ended. Now it's which GPU? What tensor parallelism? Are you using inferentia chips? What about TPUs, Gaudi, and so on? And so there's more choices than ever that developers need to, to be aware of. The second explosion has been in the number of cloud providers and compute providers. There's obviously the major cloud providers, but new cloud providers like Oracle and Lambda Labs further complicate choices for developers trying to build these sorts of applications. There's more frameworks and techniques. No longer is it just PyTorch or TensorFlow, it's what inference engine do I use? Do I use VLLM, TGI, NVIDIA RTLM, which one is right for my application? And finally, there's been an explosion in data, both the types of data being used, whether that's image, text, uh, audio, speech, and the volume of data that are now powering these sorts of applications. All told, trying to stitch together these elements is hard enough, never mind optimizing to actually deliver your application with the very best price and performance that you can. And this is what we've been hearing from some of our very large uh, users and developers that we work with. They're trying to find how do we get the most out of our compute resources and our future proof and using the very best out that's available to build the amazing applications we want to build. So we've been engaging with customers like Uber, OpenAI, who trained GPT um, with Ray, Samsara, and more that are all trying to solve this challenge. How do we build amazing applications and solve the infrastructure complexity issues? And that's where AnyScale comes in. We've built a platform to help build these sort of applications and make it easy for developers to focus on the, the, the actual application they're building. So I'll walk through a couple components of that application and the, and, the, and the headaches and challenges they're addressing. First, as part of the platform, there's our serverless LLM API. We mentioned the prohibitive costs and compute needs to even start experimenting with an application. Well, the serverless LLM API provides a dream playground for developers to get access to the best open source models with an open AI compatible API for a very cost-effective price point at a dollar per million tokens. 
out of the box, this helps developers start iterating, experimenting, and building the sort of application we talked about at the beginning. But there's more to it than just focusing on cost or providing compute. We mentioned that as part of this sort of application, we wanted to make sure that we provided structured outputs. When we make a recommendation to a um, patient, we want to have a known um, set of data that we can use to then continue iterating and improving. And that's what we call JSON mode, a new feature that we released recently that makes sure the response you get from an LLM is formatted to fit a specific schema. Super helpful for apps that integrate and work with each other or for the example I highlighted on making sure we store that data and can keep learning rather than the randomness that might come with an LLM. The second piece that's super critical in the application example I provided is what we call function calling. If I ask a question like, what's the healthiest food to eat at Olive Garden? Unless Llama 2 and GPT-4 were trained with that sort of information, it might not be able to answer. So providing an LLM the tool and an API to go and get the, the list of items on the menu at Olive Garden and the nutritional info enables me to build an application very easily for patients to get that sort of information and make adjustments. Now, as we talked about that initial um, application that we were building, on top of costs and compute, we started talking about some of the other pieces. Spiky traffic, optimizing your application for your very specific requirements, and more. And that's where AnyScale's self-hosted LLM offering comes into play. This offering gives developers the privacy, control, and customizability they need to address challenges like auto-scaling, spiky traffic, reliability, and more. And I'll highlight a couple features in here that help alleviate those problems and headaches. First is the ability to completely customize your setup. That means being able to deploy any model and any LLM. And after all, if you're fine tuning, you might have thousands of new models you need to be able to deploy. There might be a new LLM you want to deploy, and you can do that with, with the self-hosting option. Secondly is being able to configure choices like the underlying hardware that's being used, the tensor parallelism or accelerator. Certain models may work best on certain hardware configurations. Having the control and customizability to do that can help reduce compute costs while still meeting your application requirements. The next piece we talked about was reliability. Healthcare is a 24 by seven issue. We can't have a system that's not robust and reliable. So out of the box, when self-hosting LLMs with any scale, there's integrated real-time alerting, there's fault tolerance and the ability to withstand node failures, zero downtime upgrades to keep your production application running reliably. In chaos testing, we've seen greater than 99.9% .9 reliability, which is obviously very important for these mission-critical applications. Talking about uh, some of the challenges with scaling and spiky traffic, out of the box when self-hosting LLMs with any scale, you're able to deploy models on shared resources and actually independently scale models, including all the way down to zero. So if we have an application with millions of users, if certain models are very lightly used, we will scale down and save on compute costs. And as we scale up, there's quite a bit of work that we've done to scale up very quickly so that your underlying infrastructure meets exactly the traffic that your application is serving. This helps make sure you're not having unnecessary spend and, and make sure that uh, there's no surprise bills or sticker shock. Continuing on the thread of um, auto scaling and cost, out of the box, automatically searching across availability zones for capacity, including on-demand and spot nodes. This means as you're serving your application, AnyScale is automatically trying to find the best price performance to meet the requirements. Obviously, spot instances can offer market savings over on-demand instances, and AnyScale can seamlessly transition between spot and on-demand so that your application's running as cost-effectively as possible. Now, in the an, an early example we gave, we obviously had a very generative AI-focused application, a RAG application to let patients chat. But there were other more traditional AI machine learning concepts that could help that application. 
a classification model to predict if a patient's about to make a poor decision. And so as you go beyond LLMs, AnyScale provides a developer platform with tooling that they love to help solve any AI workload, whether doing data processing, machine learning trading, or serving any type of model. One of the key features there is what we call AnyScale workspaces. AnyScale workspaces enable developers to work in familiar tooling like JupyterLab or VS Code, build, observe the applications they're building, uh, distributed debugging to make sure they work right, and a seamless path to production. So as you move along in this spectrum and the types of applications we're seeing, tooling to meet every step. Now all this is made possible by our foundation, which is built on Ray, the distributed open source framework that has become an AI standard. Part of the reason it's become that standard is its Python first approach, its simple, flexible, and extensible API, the scalability, and its native support for heterogeneous hardware, allowing you to make sure that you're right-sizing your workloads on the right instances. Ray comes out of the box with a number of high-level libraries that make it very easy for developers to use and integrate seamlessly with the AI ecosystem. So whether you want to use TensorFlow, PyTorch, or name your framework, you are future-proofed um, and ready to go. To give you just a very quick example, it's as easy as adding a decorator to a function and now things will be distributed. That same decorator, you can specify the GPU or accelerator to use and now you're having complete control over your setup to optimize it for your workload. To give you a concrete example, let's take a look at a batch inference workload. So we talked early on about doing large scale embeddings and that's a type of batch inference use case. As part of that, we want to load some data we might want to pre-process it, actually perform the embedding or do inference, and then save those results. With AnyScale and Ray, you can actually do this all with one framework and make use of different compute options at each stage. That has enormous benefits. If you're processing, let's say, a million images, with Ray, that can cost as low as $3.50, whereas with a leading open source framework, it's more than twice that, and with one of the leading commercial ML platforms, it's 16 times that. So the flexibility of the foundation make it possible to build these sorts of applications and run them cost effectively. With AnyScale, that's improved even further by 28%, bringing the cost down to as low as $2.50. So there you have it. I think there's, um, you know, the key takeaway is that the sort of applications we're seeing are incredibly complex. They're making use of all sorts of heterogeneous hardware to meet very specific requirements. AnyScale and Ray provide the foundation to make it possible to very fine-grained control over those elements to build and deliver these sorts of applications. Let's talk really quickly. I know as part of the talk we wanted to just highlight a couple items on our roadmap that we're excited about. First is what we call the Smart Instance Manager or SIM. This dynamically optimizes the price performance of all your available compute resources to run your applications at the very best uh, cost point possible. And as we're seeing at an increasing explosion, as I mentioned, in accelerators, clouds, and choices, SIM is super important as it does, most of, it does all of the work for developers, so they don't need to focus on that piece. The second exciting opportunity I want to call out is machine pools. We've seen more and more clouds and on-premise deployments. Being able to create hybrid clusters that span across clouds and burst as necessary is a great way for developers to make sure they're getting the very best utilization of their very precious and sometimes expensive compute resources. So with that, I'd like to wrap up. Um, really excited about what we're building and the types of applications that we're seeing our developers and users uh, engage with. And the only thing uh, standing in their way is some of these really hard infrastructure problems. And here at AnyScale, we're working on supporting developers to deploy any model, any accelerator, and on any cloud. We have a booth in the back, happy to take questions back there, or uh, I'll step to the side here after. But thank you very much, and uh, have a great rest of the day. <laughs>